So there are three ways in which the scale can be represented. First one is the ratio scale. Second one is the verbal scale and the third one is the graphical scale. Three different ways in which the scales are given on the map. The concept of large scale and small, small scale was also explained that when the value or the when the denominator value is big, then it is a small scale and when the denominator is comparatively smaller, then it is a large scale map. When we have a small scale map, lesser amount of detail is given, but more area is covered. When we have a large scale map, smaller area covered with more detail. Usually or theoretically, the scale of the map is constant or if you uh, place or if you read anything on the map, you can see that the scale will be same. The scale is used to convert whatever reading you are making on the map to the equivalent ground distance or equivalent ground area. This scale property is available on the map but not on the images. Okay. Some type of corrected images have the scale property but otherwise the scale property is not in the images. Next third one is about the features from the real world. There are three ways in which the spatial entities are depicted on the map. These are point, line and polygon depending upon the scale. The type of entity is decided whether we will represent anything by a point or by a polygon or by line or by a polygon. In the previous lecture, we have learnt about the generalization and the generalization says that it is not just about the features that we are mapping, what is the size of that feature? It is also about the map readability. Okay. So whether you are able to read that map or not. So for that reason, there are some of the errors that are deliberately introduced in the map so that the features are properly readable. So that's why you have seen that the points were getting converted into polygon, lines are getting converted into polygon or reverse of that polygon were getting converted into point or line. Then method for the representation of these features we have already seen. Then generalization. Generalization means that when you create a map, you cannot represent everything on the map. You have to select something, you have to remove something. Only then you can draw a map or you can portray the things on the map. If you try to put everything on the map, then it will become means you cannot read that map. For that reason, we have to perform the generalization. We have to ensure that the map remain readable. For that, we do generalization and there are several techniques in generalization that we have studied in the last step. So do not see your answer, uh, your notebook. Just try to write yourself how many generalization methods that we have studied, number of generalization method along with their name. Okay. Write down in your copy by yourself generalization methods. The generalization methods are listed over here. Some of them we have studied, which are simplification, smoothing, 
aggregation, amalgamation, merging, collapse, refinement, exaggeration, and displacement. So, hope everyone have write, uh, written down the name of the generalization method. Now try to write down what you will do in each of the method. Okay, just a one line explanation like what is simplification? It removes or it tries to reduce the number of points in any of the feature. So let's see it one by one. So first one was the simplification. In this, the operator selects the characteristics or shape describing points to retain and reject the redundant point that are considered to be unnecessary to display the line character. This is what the simplification is. Okay. Next one was smoothing. What was the smoothing? It is the replacement of the sharp curves. In this case, the number of points remain the same. As you can see in the diagram, the number of points remain the same, but the sharp turns, the sharp curves are removed. Next one, aggregation. In this, number of points are aggregated together to form a single polygon. Okay. Why this aggregation takes place? Because when there is a scale change, there is a possibility that those points will get eliminated or omitted. Therefore, it is better to represent them by a polygon so that they clearly appear on the map. So, aggregation is point to polygon. Then amalgamation. It is quite similar to the aggregation. But in this case, amalgamation means polygon to polygon or we can say polygons to polygon in which multiple polygons are amalgamated together to form a single polygon. Merging. Merging is done for the line. So larger number of lines are replaced by the smaller number of lines. Collapse. Polygon to point or line. As you can see in the figure, the polygon is getting converted into a line. Refinement. It is the replacement of a complex pattern of objects by a selection that preserves the Patterns general form. Exaggeration. In this certain place, the size of anything will increase, like you can say bay and inlet. So if inlet will become, if there is a scale change, then inlet will, the narrow inlet become closed. Okay, then how the water will flow. So that's why there is a need to exaggerate that area. It means that the error is deliberately introduced over here. The size of the inlet is increased, but it is necessary because if this thing is not done, then the, when there is a cha scale change, the narrow inlet will automatically closed. Displacement, moving of object from their true position to preserve the visibility and distinctness. We have seen the examples of all these things. After that, we have started the map projection. Okay. So what was map projection? When we try to convert 3D Earth on a two-dimensional flat surface, then we need a map projection. An example of orange was given to you that when we try to flatten the orange, what will happen? 
if we put a pressure from our palm and if we place an orange on a table and if we try to place a pressure on the orange then automatically if we press or if we put a lot of pressure on the orange it will get flattened but this will result in the distortion in the shape and size of that orange similarly when we try to project 3d earth on a 2d flat surface in that case again there will be a distortion this distortion will take place in three form <clears throat> area shape distance and direction the distortion was depicted in this diagram that how the distortion is taking place the developing surface is intersecting at two places of the globe like at a and at i1 and i and when there is an intersection the a b capital a b d and e are projected on a map surface in the form of small a b d and e the distance of a and b on the earth is more than that on the map similarly d and e the distance on the map is more than that of the same distance on the earth so this is the distortion at some places there will be stretching at some places there will be a compression so overall we have seen the classification of the projection system on the basis of preserving property on the basis of this we have four type of projection first one was the area those projection system that preserves the area property they are known as the equivalent projection or homolographic projection in this case the shape of uh, the shape will get distorted but area will remain same second type is shape preserving which is also known as conformal projection or orthomorphic projection they are also known as the mercator projection okay so in this the shape will preserve but if you can see the area is getting completely distorted the example of iceland and the brazil was given to you that you can see that the iceland is appearing even larger than the south america so this is what happens when the shape preserving projection system is taking the shape will be okay but the area will get distorted then distance preserving in this the distance will be preserved but only along a certain line this type of projection is called true scale or equidistance projection next the last one the fourth one in this category was the directional or azimuthal projection that preserves the direction after that we have seen the map projection on the basis of developing surface so it can be a cylindrical projection it can be a conical projection or it can be a planar projection the very first one is the cylindrical projection so in the kind of projection system this is what happens that if you place a light bulb inside a globe and the globe in the globe the light cannot pass through the land but it can pass through the water and if you try to take the projection of that one on the on some sort of paper that is wrapped around a globe on the basis of that this projection is created in the cylindrical projection as you can see the whole globe is getting projected on the developing surface okay you can see a continuous picture of the earth so the countries near the equator is in true relative positions but as you move away from the equator and reaches the pole then the distortion will become very high at the pole you can see a small at the pole the size of the latitude is very less as compared to the equator the size of the longitude remains same but the size of the latitude decreases as you move away from the equator okay but when you perform cylindrical projection what will happen the length of the longitude will become somewhat greater than the actual length but if you see the latitude the latitude there is a lot of distortion over here because all the latitudes are of same length and that is equal to the length of equator that's why this is not good for the 
polar region there is a lot of distortion in the cylindrical projection if you map the area that is away from the equatorial region next one was the conic projection in this conic projection a cone is wrapped around the earth now there are two ways of doing all type of projection whether it is a cylindrical whether it is a conic you can create a tangent or you can create a secant so it can either touch at one place or it can intersect the globe at two places okay so in case of cylind conic projection usually only a half earth is getting projected over here and the point at which or the points at which the developing surface is secant to the globe at those points there is a standard parallel okay the point at which the latitude or the parallel that passes through the point that is tangent to the cone or that is secant to the cone they will give you the standard parallel or standard parallels okay so the scale is constant at that particular parallel conic projection is used at those places where the standard parallel passes okay so many times we will hear that there is a polyconic projection so instead of taking a single cone they will use multiple cones because they will see at which place the cone is getting tangent to the globe then the last one was the planar projection in this in the planar projection so this is how the planar projection is taken in this at any of the point the plane is the plane the plane surface is taken as a developing surface okay so in this one the parallels will appear as a concentric circles while the meridians or the longitude will appear as the straight line going radially outward like this okay in this again the same thing the point at which the developing surface is tangent to the globe at that place there will be the least distortion now we have to start from this point today which is about the aspect of map projection okay how we are going to place the developing surface around the globe so first one was it can be cylindrical conic or planar now what will be the angle of the developing surface from the polar axis on the basis of that this type of classification is given okay so in map projection the developable surface can be placed in three different ways called aspects relative to the globe normal transverse and third one is oblique this will affect the appearance of the gratitude graticule and can be applied to create projection that are able to preserve that are able to better preserve the properties of area shape distance or direction okay so first all of you try by yourself no to make a normal projection normal means when the angle between the developing surface okay this developing surface and the earth is 90 degree in transverse it is 0 degree in oblique it is between 0 and 90 degree no no um i think so i have told you something wrong in normal there is a the polar axis of the earth and the developing surface is parallel to each other the axis of the cylinder or the axis of the cone will be parallel to the polar axis in case of normal aspect in case of transverse aspect the axis of the cylinder or the axis of the cone will be at 90 degree from the polar axis of the earth okay in oblique aspect the axis of the cylinder or that of the cone will at some degree between 0 to 90 degree from the polar axis of the earth 
So try to make diagram of this one. Suppose you are taking a cylindrical projection. Try to draw the cylindrical projection with normal aspect, with transverse aspect and with oblique aspect. You already know how to make a cylindrical projection. How to draw the diagram of cylindrical projection. Now try these three different aspects. So the answer is like this. See the last one. Cylindrical projection. So this one is the normal. The first one is the normal aspect. Second one is the transverse aspect and third one is the oblique aspect. If you go for the transverse aspect, how the latitude and longitude will appear? I will ask in another way. If you use the transverse aspect at which place the distortion will be maximum if you are using a normal aspect i am just talking about the cylindrical projection so if you are using a normal projection at which position the distortion will be maximum board in which projection Aspect or sorry, normal or transverse. I'm opening another diagram. Okay, this one is again the same one. You have three types of aspect normal, transverse, and oblique. As you can see on the screen, that the cylindrical projection is made using normal, transverse, and oblique. Okay. Now my question is if you are using a normal projection at which position the distortion will be maximum. If you use transverse projection at which place the distortion will be maximum at which place it will be minimum. I mean normal projection it will be maximum at poles and in transverse it will be maximum at equators. Yes. So if you see the projection and you can see that in the normal projection, the cylinder is tangent or it is secant at the equatorial position. So it will be minimum at equator and as you move away towards the pole, it will be the maximum at pole. We have already discussed about it. Second one, in case of transverse, what is happening? Now the cylinder is becoming tangent or secant at the polar region instead of equator. Okay, instead of equator, it is at it is tangent at the polar region. That's why the, the distortion that was maximum earlier in the normal aspect, it was maximum at the pole. But in this case, in case of transverse projection, it will be tangent at the pole and it will not be that much distorted as it was earlier. Okay. So depending upon the requirement, the aspect of the projection is selected. Whether we will go for the normal or trans traverse, transverse or it will be the oblique projection. Next classification of map projection is on the basis of viewpoint. OK. Viewpoint means where the light source is placed. 
So there can be three places at the center of the globe, on the surface of the globe, opposite to the developing surface, or from infinity. Okay. On the basis of this, the projection can be of three types: gnomonic projection, stereographic projection, and orthographic projection. As you can see in this diagram, gnomonic means when the light source is placed at the center of the earth. In stereographic, when the light source is placed at the opposite end, and when in orthographic, the light is placed at the infinity. So these are the different places at which the light source can be placed. Okay. This is about the viewpoint. Okay. Now, before I will proceed to the other projection, what you need to do, you need to make a diagram in your notebook that will show the classification of projection. In the previous lecture also, we were making that diagram, but it was incomplete. Okay. Now, try to make, there are four ways in which the classification can, uh, this map projection classification can be made. Write down in your notebook. I think all of you have created this classification of projection on the basis of preserving property. It can be area preserving, shape preserving, distance preserving or direction preserving. Then developing surface basis, it can be cylindrical, conic, planar. On the basis of aspect, it can be normal, transverse or oblique. Then on the basis of viewpoint, it can be gnomonic, stereographic, or orthographic. Spelling is mistake. It 
can be orthographic. Okay. Now, there is a question. Have you seen the flag of UNO? So this is the flag of United Nations. Can you tell what is there in the uh, this particular logo? What is drawn on the map on the flag of United Nation? Concentric, concentric circles, ma'am. Anything else? Planar projection, ma'am. Which projection? Planar projection. Okay. So I hope everyone is able to see this particular. So this is the flag of United Nations and you have just learned the planar projection. This particular flag is showing the planar projection of the globe. So there here you can see that there are the concentric circles which are parallels and you can see this radially outward lines which are the longitude. And this is the projection of the earth. Although this is not the completely correct projection, there are the distortions so that the complete uh, earth will appear on, on this one, but this is showing you the planar projection. Okay. Coming back. Next projection is the Mercator projection. Why we are reading this one? Because we are going towards the UTM. Okay. So in the UTM, the T stand M stands for Mercator. Okay. So since we are moving towards the UTM, one by one we will read the projections that are associated with the UTM. Okay. So as I am telling you in UTM, M stands for Mercator. So what is Mercator projection? Okay. So Mercator projection is the cylindrical projection. Okay. This one is just like a cylindrical projection. We have already studied about it. So I am just reading about this one. Mercator projection can be visualized as a spheroid projection onto a cylindric cylinder tangent to the equator and parallel to the polar axis. Okay. So parallel to the polar axis means it has a normal projection. When the cylinder is open and flattened, a distortion appear. The distortion become more pronounced as the distance from the equator increases. The Mercator projection has a straight meridian and parallel that intersect at right angles. The scale is true at the equator or at two standard parallel equidistance from the equator. What does, it, uh, what does it mean or what you can conclude from the last line? It says there are two parts in the uh, fourth point. The scale is true at the equator. When it will be true at equator? When the cylindrical projection is tangent at the equator. The second part says the two standard parallels equal distance from the, the scale is true at the two standard parallels equidistant from the equator. When this will, when this will be the case, it will happen when the cylinder is secant to the globe. Okay. When it will intersect the globe, in that case, if the cylinder is intersecting the globe, it will intersect at two points, not at a one point. So the two point at which the cylinder is intersecting the globe, it will give you the points where of two standard parallels. These standard parallel will be equidistant from the equator, one at the north, another one at the south. And these two standard parallel will have true scale. This one is the diagram. You already know spheroid and cylinder on common axis 
and tangent along the equator. Developing surface will be the cylinder. Origin of projection lines three fourth of the way back along the diameter. The Mercator projection enlarges the area in higher latitude. Okay. For example, the Alaska in North America appears about the same size as Brazil in the South America, whereas in fact. Brazil is more than five times larger than the Alaska. So there are two places that are marked on this map. First one is the Alaska. On the left hand side, you can see that there is an Alaska in United States. And here in the South America, there is Brazil. Now the size of Alaska is appearing to be almost same size as, as the Brazil, although the size of Alaska is five times smaller than the Brazil. Similar thing you can observe from the for this uh, South America, this whole continent and this Greenland. So the Greenland is much smaller than the South America, but it is appearing at the same size. Okay. Now the properties of the Mercator projection, it will be just same as the cylindrical projection that we have already studied. Parallel and meridians are straight lines. The meridians intersect the parallels at right angles. The distance between the parallels go on increasing towards the pole, but the distance between the meridian remain the same. You can observe the same thing on this map also. You know, the gap between the parallels, the gap between the latitudes are not same. At the equator, this gap is less. As you move towards the equator, the gap between the latitudes increases. Okay. But if you see the longitudes or the meridians, the longitudes, the gap between the longitudes remain the same. So this is what written over there that the meridians, the gap between the meridian will remain same, but the gap between the parallels will increase as you move away from the equator. All the parallels are of the same length and every one of them is equal to the length of the equator. The length of the equator on this projection is equal to the length of the equator on the globe. The meridians are the longer than the corresponding meridian on the globe. So we have already seen all these six properties earlier in the cylindrical projection. But keep this thing in mind that all these property holds for the Mercator projection. Okay. Next, what are the limitations? The scale along the parallels and the meridians increases rapidly towards the pole. Being a great exaggeration of the scale along the parallel and the meridians in high latitudes, the size of the countries on this projection are very large in the polar areas. For this reason, reason the polar areas cannot be shown satisfactorily on this projection. Poles cannot be shown on this projection because the exaggeration in the scale along the 90 degrees where the parallel and the meridians touch them will become infinite. So these are the limitation of the Mercator projection in simple words. You cannot represent anything that is located on the or near to the pole because of the exaggeration because of the scaling. Now. The second part is if you see the UTM, the T stands for transverse. So instead of coming to the UTM complete, now we are taking the next two terms, T and M, traverse mercator. What is the meaning of transverse mercator? So what is transverse? It will give you the aspect. Okay. The aspect will normal, transverse or oblique. Okay, so when we talk about the transfer, it means transverse. It means the angle between the axis of cylinder and the polar axis will be 90 degree. Okay, so let's see what is there in the transverse Mercator projection. The transverse Mercator projection is the variation of the Mercator projection and the best known projection of the world. Transverse Mercator projection result from projecting the sphere onto a cylinder tangent to a central meridian. Instead of using the standard parallel as in the case of Mercator projection, 
the transverse mercator projection uses the standard meridian so it's obvious what was the trans if you are using the mercator projection what was the standard parallel the points at which the cylinder is tangent or secant to the globe but when we are going for the transverse mercator the the cylinder the developing surface is rotated at 90 degree in this case at which point the cylinder will be tangent or at which point it will be secant instead of latitude it will be the longitude that's why instead of standard parallel it will be a standard meridian this is what it is given over here instead of using the standard parallels as in the case of mercator projection the transverse mercator projection uses the standard meridian for serving purposes and to minimize the distortion the transverse mercator projection uses 60 longitudinal zones of 6 degrees wide we will cover this point later in utm transverse mercator project mercator maps are often to portray areas with larger north to south than east to west extent so which this is true for india or not the north to south extent is more than east to west extent or not is it true for india or not that the length of india is from north to south is more than that of east to west if you are not okay if you are not sure then you can check it on the internet or even you can see the map of india just only so yes it's true that the north to south extent is more than east to west that's why transverse mercator projection is good for india distortion of scale distance direction and area increases away from the central meridian that's why british national grid system and indian national grid system are based on the transverse mercator projection system so nowadays we are following the utm when the new mapping policy came and osm series maps were published but earlier when there was a topographic map series they uses polyconic map projection okay so they uses this it is given over here that the indian national system are based on the transverse mercator projection system the transverse mercator projection requires parameters like scale factor at the central meridian longitude of the central meridian latitude of origin values of false easting and false northing we are coming to this all these point in the utm this is how the transverse mercator projection appear the developing surface you can see it is rotated at 90 degree okay the axis of spheroid normal to the axis of cylinder spheroid tangent to the cylinder along a meridian origin of projection line 3/4 of the way back along the diameter so the next one is utm universal traverse mercator so this was this one was given by john henrich lambert so utm is based on a mercator projection but in traverse transverse aspect we have already seen about it it means that the projection is analogous to wrapping a cylinder around the poles rather than around the equator in this way the distortion from pole to pole is minimized and distances are true only along the central meridian since the utm is a conformal projection shapes and angles are true within a small area so what was basically the problem that you cannot use a single cylinder cylinder and wrap it around the globe and say that it is useful for all the countries or it is useful for every places that's why when we talk about the utm in this case there are several cylinders that are rotated around the earth okay as you can see on the screen that there is a globe although the map uh, this diagram is not very clear but you can see that the cylinder is moving okay that the cylinder is going to rotate around the earth and it will form total 60 dose zones okay each cylinder will take 6 degree interval if you see the angle between the 
first cylinder and the second cylinder, the angle will be six degree interval. So projection is applied repeatedly by using multiple cylinders that touch the globe at six degree interval. Thus, there are 60 zones in the system. How 60? Divide 360 by six. 360 by six. So answer is 60. This is how the, the cylinder is going to be moved or it will get rotated around the globe in 360 degree. That's why each each at the interval of six degrees. So this will form the 60 zones. Okay. Thus there are 60 zones in the cylinder in the system and each zone correspond to a half cylinder wrapped along a particular line of longitude. Each zone being six degree wide in longitude. So this is how the UTM will appear. Okay, It will start from 180 degree west up to 180 degree east. Okay, Draw this diagram on your copy so that you will remember the UTM or the Universal Transverse Mercator Zones. In this, the whole globe, okay, the whole Earth is projected. It will start from 180 degree west up to 180 degree east. And the zone will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 60. So if, if you see the extent of the zone 1, it will start from 180 degree west up to what will be the value of this particular line at which this first zone will end? What will be the extent of zone 1? 6 degrees. No? Yes. If, of course, if it is starting from 180 degree west, where it will end? 174 degree west. Yes, it will end at 174 degree west. Zone 1 will be from 180 degree west up to 174 degree west. Then what will be the extent of the second zone? It will be from 174 degree west up to 168 degree west. Yes, 168 degree west. Is it clear to everyone how this values are get how these values are calculated? If anyone has any doubt in UTM, you can ask it immediately. This is a little bit complicated, but if you can ask, Ma you will ask. Six yes? degree interval has been. Ma'am, why only six degree interval has been taken? They have seen they have calculated this thing. That's why this UTM was given. Okay. So they have found that the six degree is okay, and with the six degree, the, the whole globe will get covered in sixty zones. Okay, so that's why the six degree interval was taken. Draw this diagram on your copy.
so this is about the utm zones okay from 180 degree west up to 180 degree east there will be total 60 zones and at the equator it can be divided into two parts okay now the second part utm system is secant okay so it will not tangent to the globe but it will be the secant to the globe lines of scale 1 are located some distance on both side of the central meridian to compensate for the scale distortion scale is taken as 0.9996 at the central meridian and 1.0004 at the edge of the zone i will show you this thing from this one so this is how this whole zone will be created okay this is one of the zone major feature of the utm zone 14 okay now if you see this zone 14 it will be from 100 and 102 degree west up to 96 degree west this one is the extent 102 up to 96 so there is a total 6 degree extent then what will be the position of central meridian the central line will be at 99 west 3 degree okay 3 degree from each side so it will be at 99 degree west the scale will not be constant in this whole zone okay in the 6 degree zone this is the one of the zone which is extracted so this zone number 14 is showing that the scale will not be constant throughout the zone it will vary and what will be the variation it will vary from point 0.96 at the central meridian if you are at the central meridian it will be at point 0.96 and if you are at the zone outer zone 102 degree west or 96 degree west so at this the zone boundaries it will be at 1.004 so scale will vary slightly in this whole zone as you move around the central meridian okay. this diagram the next diagram will show you the false easting and false northing concept in utm okay so if you try to see this there in within the one zone there will be two part okay because it is getting intersected by the equator so this is the zone number 29 of utm and it lies between 12 degree to 6 degree west longitude the zone will get split in two halves by the equator the half on the left represent the area found in the north hemisphere and the southern hemisphere is located on the right side in each of this okay whether it is first half or it is the second half each one you can see this or a blue color line what is this blue color line this blue color line is the central meridian of this zone okay now if you try to find out what will be the origin okay now the problem is if you take the very first part of the zone the north hemisphere of the zone if you take the origin the position of x axis is okay okay the position of x axis okay but the position of y axis is shifted it is not at the origin it is if it is shifted 5 lakh meters towards the left then it will give you the proper origin that's why there is a false easting in this one in order to give a false origin there is a shifting 5000 uh, sorry 5 lakh meters towards the west of the central meridian okay similarly if you take the yes then samajh mein nahi aa raha hai ye wala part ye part samajh mein nahi aa raha hai okay yahan par aapko utm ka zone dikhaya gaya 
यूटीएम के जोन के दो पार्ट होंगे कैसे दो पार्ट होंगे नॉर्थ साउथ से दो पार्ट बनेंगे क्योंकि इक्वेटर पे इंटरसेक्ट हो रहा है है ना आपने जो प्रीवियस डायग्राम बनाया था उसमें भी आपने देखा कि इक्वेटर पे वो हाफ में डिवाइड हो रहा था अब हर एक जोन को भी यूटीएम के एक जोन को भी दो पार्ट में लिया जाता है नॉर्थ और साउथ ठीक है यहां तक समझ में आ गया लेफ्ट वाला जो पार्ट है वो नॉर्थ को दिखा रहा है राइट right वाला पार्ट जो है वो साउथ को दिखा रहा है ये भी ठीक है अब प्रॉब्लम में आप क्या बता रहे हैं ओरिजिन की प्रॉब्लम यहाँ पर बता रहे हैं ओरिजिन का क्या दिक्कत है यहाँ देखिए अगर आप पहले वाले पार्ट को देखेंगे जो कि नॉर्थ को दिखा रहा है ठीक है जिसके बॉटम में इक्वेटर है ठीक है तो इसका आप देखिए यहाँ पर जो एक्स एक्सिस है उसकी लोकेशन तो ठीक है एक्स एक्सिस से आपको क्या मिलता है ईस्टिंग की वैल्यूज है ना वाई एक्सिस को देखिए आपका ओरिजिन कहाँ होना चाहिए आपका ओरिजिन मेरा कर्सर जहां इस समय रखा हुआ है वहां पर आपका ओरिजिन होना चाहिए इसको हम बना दे रहे हैं ठीक है आप ओरिजिन यहां पर एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं जिससे हमने रेड कलर का सर्कल बनाया है यहाँ ओरिजिन के लिए एक्स एक्सिस में तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है क्योंकि वहीं पर वो लाई कर रहा है वाई एक्सिस लेकिन यहाँ पर सेंट्रल मरीडियन के अलाउंट लाई कर रहा है तो जरूरी है कि इस इस सेंट्रल एक्सिस को यहाँ पर अगर हम शिफ्ट कर दें तो ओरिजिन यहाँ पर हमारा आ जाएगा ठीक है वही यहाँ पर लिखा है अलोकेशन मेजरमेंट फॉर दिस जोन आर कैलकुलेटेड रिलेटेड टू अ फॉल्स ओरिजिन इन द नॉर्थ हेमोस्फियर दिस ओरिजिन इज लोकेटेड फाइव लाख मीटर्स वेस्ट ऑफ देंट्रल मरीडियन अब आते हैं दूसरे जोन की ओर जब सदर्न हेमोस्फीयर की बात करते हैं उस केस में ओरिजिन ये ग्रीन कलर का सर्कल जो दिखाया है वहां पर आना चाहिए अब प्रॉब्लम क्या है इसका ओरिजिन तो इक्वेटर पे लाई कर रहा है तो प्रीवियस केस में कोई दिक्कत नहीं था क्योंकि इक्वेटर एकदम बॉटम पे लाई कर रहा था इस केस में क्या दिक्कत है इक्वेटर टॉप पर लाई कर रहा है इसको ऊपर से हमको नीचे की ओर शिफ्ट करना पड़ेगा और बाकी ये वाला जो लाइन है जो ब्लू कलर लाइन है जो कि सेंट्रल मरीडियन दिखा रहा है उसको तो शिफ्ट करना ही करना है साथ ही साथ ये ऊपर से नीचे भी शिफ्ट कराना है जिससे कि ओरिजिन ये जो ग्रीन कलर का सर्कल जहां पर है वहां पे आ जाए तो ओरिजिन जो है एट प्रेजेंट इस ग्रीन वाले का देखे तो ओरिजिन कहाँ पर है अभी अभी ओरिजिन यहाँ पर ना हो करके ये येलो कलर का भी सर्कल जो ड्रॉ किया है अभी ओरिजिन आर्ट प्रेजेंट यहाँ पर है हमको ओरिजिन वहां पे नहीं वहां से शिफ्ट करके ये जो ग्रीन सर्कल है वहां पर लेकर के आना है इसके लिए अगेन दोनों वैल्यूज आपको शिफ्ट करानी पड़ेगी एक तो ऊपर से नीचे लेकर के आना पड़ेगा ठीक है दैट इज नॉर्थ टू साउथ शिफ्ट तो यही लिखा है द सदर्न हेमोस्फियर यूटी मेजरमेंट आर डिटरमाइंड रिलेटिव टू एन ओरिजिन लोकेटेड आर्ट मनी 
हंड्रेड लाख मीटर साउथ ओके एंड फाइव हंड्रेड मीटर वेस्ट यहाँ पर देखिए इस येलो वाले सर्कल को एक तो साउथ में नीचे की ओर लेकर आना है फिर टुवर्ड्स दी लेफ्ट यानी टुवर्ड्स दी वेस्ट वर्ड वेस्ट इसको शिफ्ट कराना है तो वेस्ट वाला शिफ्ट तो दोनों नॉर्थ और साउथ में दोनों में सेम हो रहा है विच इज ऑफ फाइव लाख मीटर्स दोनों में सेम शिफ्टिंग हो रही है टुवर्ड्स दी वेस्ट बट नॉर्थ वाले में आपको साउथ की ओर शिफ्ट नहीं करना केवल लेफ्ट की ओर शिफ्ट करना है लेकिन इस केस में आपको साउथ की भी ओर शिफ्ट करना है और लेफ्ट की भी ओर शिफ्ट करना है यही चीज यहाँ पर बता रही है बताई जा रही है कि यहाँ पर एक फॉल्स ओरिजिन को लिया जाता है जिसके अगेंस्ट में ये मेजरमेंट होता है इसी कारण से अब आप वैल्यूज देखेंगे ठीक है यहाँ पर फॉल्स ईस्टिंग एंड फॉल्स नॉर्दिंग की वैल्यूज को लिया जा रहा है फॉल्स ईस्टिंग कितनी हो रही है टुवर्ड्स ये देखिए ये शिफ्टिंग कितना है फॉल्स ईस्टिंग इज फाइव लाख मीटर्स ओके फॉल्स नॉर्दिंग कितनी है पहले वाले केस में कोई नहीं होगी लेकिन दूसरे वाले केस में सदर्न हेमोस्फियर के केस में यहाँ पर फॉल्स नॉर्दिंग आएगी फॉल्स नॉर्दिंग कितने की होगी हंड्रेड लाख मीटर्स की होगी ठीक है तो ये पूरा यहाँ पर जो फॉल्स नॉर्दिंग फॉल्स ईस्टिंग का जो कॉन्सेप्ट था वो यहाँ पर बताया जा रहा है अभी कुछ क्लियर है आप लोग को यस ओके तो दीज आर दी यूटीएम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स प्रोजेक्शन इज ट्रेवल्स मर्केटा प्रोजेक्शन इन जोन्स ऑफ सिक्स डिग्री वाइड लॉन्गिट्यूड ऑफ ओरिजन इज देंट्रल मरीडियन ऑफ ईच जोन लैटिट्यूड ऑफ ओरिजन इज जीरो डिग्री द इक्वेटर यूनिट इज मीटर फॉल्स नॉर्थिंग इज हंड्रेड लाख फ्रॉम दर्दर्न हेमोस्फियर एंड फॉल्स ईस्टिंग इज फाइव लाख मीटर्स स्केल फैक्टर एट देंट्रल मरीडियन इज पॉइंट ट्रिपल नाइन सिक्स जोन नंबरिंग इट विल स्टार्ट विथ वन ऑन दी जोन फ्रॉम वन एटी डिग्री वेस्ट टू वन सेवेंटी फोर डिग्री वेस्ट an increasing eastward to 60 on the zone from 174 degree east to 180 degree east latitude limits of the system is 84 degree north and 80 degree south yes this is important that it will not cover from 0 degree north sorry from 90 degree north up to 90 degree south okay in order to avoid the distortion it is covering only up to 84 degree north up to 80 degree south so these are the utm characteristics that we have just studied there is a variation of the utm called military grid reference system mgrs okay in military grid reference system the zone are further divided along the latitude okay so it is known as mgrs you can say it is an extension of the utm and it has used latitudinal division also So in the United States, the military uses a modified UTM system called the military grid reference system, which further divides the UTM zones into eight degree latitudinal divisions designated with a letter. The MGRS starts at C at 80 degrees south latitude and progresses to X ending at 84 degree north latitude. The X latitudinal division is the only division 12 degree high. Additionally, to avoid user error, the letters I and O are not used because of their similarity with numbers. Okay, so this is all about the projection. We will see the example of UTM on NYC data, and then we will move to our next topic. Okay, so first there is a break of ten minutes, and after that I will continue the lecture.
Let's start the class again. Okay. So right now on the screen, you can see the New York City NYC data. Okay. And at this place where I have placed my cursor at the bottom right end. At the bottom right, you can see the coordinate of any point. Okay. So suppose I am placing my cursor at one of the subway station. How many digits are in X and Y? Before decimal, how many digits are there? M6 in X and 7 in Y. Okay, 6 in X and 7 in Y. So this is what when we take the UTM, the X and Y will have, there will be six digit in the X value and seven digits in the Y value. Okay. So this is how you can see this thing in the UTM coordinate system of this one. So first before going into that, first I will check the co coordinate system of, of this. I have opened the data frame properties and in the coordinate system you, you can find what is the UTM zone of this one. It is UTM zone 18 North, North American datum 1983, UTM zone 18N. Okay. Now, you can see projection is transverse Mercator, false easting is 5 lakh, isn't it? False northing 0 y because it is in north. It is already saying 18 n. Whenever you will find the UTM zone, UTM zone, there will be a number along with north and south value like UTM zone 18 n. Since it is in north, therefore there will be just a false easting. We have already seen why there is an easting, why there is a northing, false easting and northing because we need to shift the origin. So since it is located in the north zone, the New York City is obviously located in the north hemisphere. So that's why there is just only a need of false easting. There is no need to shift the northing value. So northing is remains zero, but easting is five lakh as we have already studied. The central meridian is at minus 75. What is the meaning of minus 75? This negative, what is the meaning of this negative value? This side. Sorry? This side. Yes, it is in west. So what will be the boundary values? If the central meridian is 75 west, negative means west. So what will be the boundary? What will be the right side and what will be the left side boundary value? 180 uh, minus 180 degree. Mm -hmm. uh, what will be the extent? What will be the longitudinal boundary values? If the central meridian is at 75 degree west. It's a very simple question. You already know what is the extent of any UTM zone. It is of 6 degree. The central meridian is at 75 degree west. You just need to add and subtract 3. Isn't it? Yes. The left will, uh, the leftmost will be at 78 minus 78 up to 72 minus 72 minus 72 minus 78 up to minus 72 or 78 degree west up to 72 degree west. Is everybody is getting this thing or not? Agar kisi ko kahi koi confusion hai values kya boli jari hai isme teen badhana aur teen ghatane ka kya matlab hai? Yes sir. 
अगर नहीं समझ में आ रहा है तो उसको पूछिए आई एम टेकिंग दिस की सबको ये सारी चीजें समझ में आ रही है इसीलिए वो कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछा जा रहा है ओके देन स्केल फैक्टर पॉइंट ट्रिपल नाइन सिक्स ये ऑलरेडी हम लोग ने देख लिया लैटिट्यूड ऑफ ओरिजिन जीरो डिग्री लीनियर यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट मीटर ओके सो दिस इज दी स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑफ यूटीएम नो फॉर दी इलाहाबाद और फॉर दी प्रयागराज वॉट इज दी यूटीएम जोन Go to the internet and find what is the UTM zone of Prayagraj. स्टडी एरिया यू विल वर्क लेटर ऑन इन योर थी the final year is all about the thesis work only there will be no course work in the final year so whenever you study about any place because usually when we perform any study there is a certain study area in most of the time but not always so if you have any study area you must know what is the utm zone in which that particular study area will form like for the prayagraj if your study area is prayagraj in that case the utm zone will be 44 n what is the utm zone for new delhi because it is a capital city what is the utm zone of 43. new delhi sure 43 anyone else also confirm this answer 43 43 north okay so it will be 43 north okay. after this this is all about the projections and this topic of projection is completed and all the things that are related to the map is done by now we are moving to the next topic which is about the survey of india maps okay in this particular portion we will study about the nomenclature of survey of india maps and this one is about the older series means topographic series of maps nowadays we are using the utm uh, sorry osm series okay before going into that one i will show you what i am talking about Well, this one is the old series map. Right now on the screen, I have opened. I hope it is visible to everyone that this particular map is of the Prayagraj. It is equivalent to P15 map that you are using. Okay, but this map is an old series map. I am just trying to find out if it is written over here or not. Just wait for one more minute. So 
So we have not written it down in this mark, but right now on the screen. I have opened one of the map. Okay. This map covers the area of major portion of Uttar Pradesh and a small portion of Madhya Pradesh. Okay. And this map was surveyed on the year 1972-74 as it is given over here. Surveyed 1972-1974. Let's come to the Survey of India maps part. So Survey of India publishes the topographical maps for India. It is a national mapping agency. Its headquarter is located. Where its headquarter is located? At which city? Delhi. No, at Dehradun. Okay, not at Delhi. At Dehradun. The headquarters of Survey of India is located. Survey of India is a very, very old mapping agency. You know, it was established by the Britishers, and a lot of work has been done because the surveying of the India. I will share one of the magazine article with you that will tell you about the details of the Survey of India. So if you are interested, you can read that magazine article and you will find that how much difficult it was to perform the survey of complete India. Okay. So this is a very old agency. And now we are coming only to the things that we are interested in that first they have printed the topographical map. I have shown you the map on the RGIS software just now. That one was the example of topographical map and it was surveyed in the year 1972 to 1974. Okay. These maps were based on the average datum. Okay, and they have a polyconic projection. These maps were given or they were printed at the scale of 1 is to 2 lakh 50,000, 1 is to 50,000. I have shown you both the maps. One was at 1 is to 2 lakh 50,000 and another one was at 1 is to 50,000. I do not have this map 1 is to 25,000 scale. But since the implementation of National Mapping Agency in the year 2005 or its date was 19th May 2005, the production of fresh topographical map have been stopped and the Survey of India has started to prepare the map under OSM series, open series maps. The laboratory that you are performing right now, they are all the maps that were given to you were open series map. Okay. So these maps again, they are prepared at different scale. One is to 2 lakh 50,000, one is to 50,000, one is to 25,000. You are working at one is to 50,000 scale map. And how it is different from the topographic map? You can see the difference in the datum. Initially, it was average datum. Nowadays, WGS 84 datum is used. The projection system earlier was polyconic projection. Nowadays, it is UTM projection. So basically, there is a shift towards the global standards. That's why this datum and this projection system has been taken. Now what we are going to see, we will see about the extent of the Survey of India topographic map and about the nomenclature, how the numbering is given, how the name is given to the topo sheet. Although this example is given for the older series map, it is of the topographic series map, but you will find it relevant even for the OSM series map. Okay, so see this one is very carefully because now you will know how to give the numbers, how the particular like if you are saying G44 P15, so how that number is given. This discussion is about the older series map. Okay, so topographic maps provide the graphical portrayal of objects present on the surface of the earth. These maps provide the preliminary information about a terrain and thus very useful for engineering works. For most part of India topographic maps are available which are prepared by the Survey of India. To identify a map of a particular area, a map numbering system has been adopted by the Survey of India. The system of identification is given below. First, the international series. It will be what is the extent of mapping of Survey of India? It is from 4 degree north. Write it down in your copy. From 4 degree north to 40 degree north latitude 
and from 44 degree east to 124 degree east longitude. You can see what is the coverage area because they give I and AC series now. What is I? India. AC means adjacent countries. Okay. So I and AC series meet India and adjacent countries maps. So that's why the extent is from 4 degree north to 40 degree north latitude and 44 degree east up to 124 degree east longitude. So these maps are at the scale of 1 is to 1 million or 1 is to 10 lakh. Okay. At this scale, what is the la latitude extent? It is from 4 degree cross 4 degree. Lat long extent is 4 degree cross 4 degree. This each 4 degree cross, these are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 like this way. Okay. So each 4 degree cross 4 degree map is further divided into 1 degree cross 1 degree map. Okay. This 1 degree cross 1 degree map is at the scale of 1 is to 2 lakh 50,000. So if you divide 4 degree cross 4 degree map, how many 1 degree cross 1 degree map will be? How many 1 degree cross 1 degree map will given appear? 16. You can see it on the screen. 76 degree up to 80 degree east, 4 degree from 28 degree up to 32 degree north, again 4 degree. So this one is a 4 degree cross 4 degree and if you divide it into 1 degree cross 1 degree, total 16 maps will come. So how they are numbered? C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, T. Okay. Write it down this thing in your copy. Draw this grid and write down how this A, B, C, D will come. You know, after, um, after telling you this thing, even then students are not able to answer if I give a sheet number and will ask what will be the adjacent sheet number. Majority of times students are not able to answer this question. So that's why I'm telling you to write it down in your copy how this numbering is taking place. So it is from A to P. So four digits downward A, B, C, four alphabets downward, then E, F, G, H, then I, J, K, L, then M, N, O, P. So what will be the lat long extent? It will, each of these sheet will be one degree cross one degree and the scale will be one is to two lakh fifty thousand. to the next further one degree cross one degree sheet is further divided into 15 minute cross 15 minute sheet so how many 15 minute cross 15 minute sheets will come the answer is same 16 yes 16 and again the numbering is in again in one two three four form okay so draw this one. You have already drawn this ABCD grid, four degree cross four degree grid, which have the sheets of one degree cross one degree. Now in any one of the cell like this one, like this B, okay? So what they have given, they have shown 15 minute cross 15 minute. Again, the 16 sheet will be resulted and you can see how the numbering is taking place. One, two, three, four, then next column, 5, 6, 7, 8, next column, 9, 10, 11, 12, next column, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Now suppose if I give you a question, what will be the adjacent sheet of 53B15? Can you give the answer? Listen this thing carefully. If I ask you to draw, the index sheet of 53B15. What will be the answer? What are the adjacent sheet? Yeah. 
22n the answer will be that jason sheet will be 53b 10 53 B eleven, B eleven, yes. B fourteen and B sixteen. B twelve, B fourteen, B sixteen. Then F two, F three, and F three. Yes, fifty three, F two, fifty three, F three, fifty three, F three, and fifty three, F four. F four. Yes. If I give now, write down. Everyone, write down in a copy the answer of this question. If I ask, fifty-three B sixteen. Draw the index for fifty-three B sixteen. So everyone, remember I have already shown you the adjacent sheets or sheet index. This is called the sheet index. Okay, this is how we create a sheet index as it is shown on the screen. This type of figure is called index sheet index or index to sheet. So all of you need to make sheet index in this way. The question is, draw the index sheet index for six fifty three B sixteen. So, if anyone have completed it, please tell the answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. B eleven. B fifty three. B twelve. C nine, B fifteen, C thirteen, F three, F four, G one. Yes. So this is how we draw the sheet index over here. If anyone have any doubt in this one, you can ask. Please, ma'am, yes, समझ नहीं आ रहा एक बार फिर से बता दीजिए sheet index कैसे बनाते हैं? शीट इंडेक्स बनाने के लिए आपको सबसे पहले ये समझना है कि नंबरिंग को ठीक है पहला वाला नंबरिंग आप नहीं कर पाएंगे वन इज टू वन एम का वो तो जो है वो रहेगा वन इज टू वन एम का जो शीट होता है वो कितने लाट लॉन्ग का एक्सटेंट होता है उसमें क्वेश्चन किसने पूछा था जी मैं सुनील अच्छा हाँ चलिए सुनील बताइए अगर वन इज टू वन एम है तो उसमें कितना लाट लॉन्ग एक्सटेंड कितना रहेगा मिलियन की अगर शीट है है ना वन इज टू टेन लाख की अगर शीट है तो लाट लॉन्ग कितना कवर होगा वन इज टू टू फिफ्टी मतलब दो लाख पचास हजार अरे क्वेश्चन सुन रहे हो आप कि नहीं स्केल नहीं पूछ रहे हैं स्केल तो हम खुद ही आपको बता रहे हैं वन इज टू वन मिलियन का स्केल है उसका लार्टिट्यूड और लॉन्गिट्यूड एक्सटेंड कितने डिग्री का होगा कित, कहा कितने डिग्री लॉन्गिट्यूड में आएंगे और कितने डिग्री लार्टिट्यूड वन डिग्री लेटिट्यूड और वन डिग्री लॉन्गिट्यूड फोर डिग्री लॉन्गिट्यूड और फोर डिग्री लार्टिट्यूड ठीक है इसको लिखो अपने पास में वन इज टू वन मिलियन के स्केल में फोर डिग्री क्रॉस फोर डिग्री की शीट होती है चार डिग्री लॉन्गिट्यूड पे चार डिग्री लैटिट्यूड पे एक्सटेंड होता है ठीक ओके okay. अब इससे नीचे अगला स्केल होता है इससे हायर स्केल आता है वन इज टू टू लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड का इन्हीं फोर डिग्री क्रॉस फोर डिग्री की शीट्स जो बनी हुई है इन्हीं शीट्स को एक बार फिर से डिवाइड किया जाता है कितने पर वन डिग्री क्रॉस वन डिग्री की शीट्स बनाई जाती है ठीक है ये वन डिग्री क्रॉस वन डिग्री की शीट वन इज टू टू लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पे होती है इसका जो नॉर्मल क्लेचर होता है इसकी जो नंबरिंग करी जाती है वो एबीसीडी अल्फाबेटिकली करी जाती है 
एबीसीडी को कैसे लिखा जाता है ये चीज यहाँ ध्यान रखनी है मतलब लिखने को तो एबीसीडी कैसे भी लिख दे लेफ्ट टू राइट भी लिखा जा सकता है यहाँ पर टॉप टू डाउन लिखा जा, जाता है ए बी सी डी फिर ऊपर से शुरू करते हैं ई एफ जी एच आई जे के एल एम एन ओ पी ठीक है इस तरीके से चार डिग्री क्रॉस चार डिग्री की शीट को एक डिग्री क्रॉस एक डिग्री पर डिवाइड किया जाता है यहाँ पर जो नॉमन क्लेचर चलेगा वो अल्फाबेटिकली चलेगा नॉर्थ टू साउथ मूव किया जाएगा नॉर्थ टू साउथ और ईस्ट और वेस्ट टू ईस्ट मूव किया जाता है ठीक है ये एक अब हमारा वन डिग्री क्रॉस वन डिग्री में बन गया अब अगला डिवीजन क्या कहा जा रहा है कि हर एक वन डिग्री क्रॉस वन एट डिग्री की शीट को फर्दर किस में डिवाइड किया जा रहा है फिफ्टीन मिनट क्रॉस फिफ्टीन मिनट में एक डिग्री में कितने पंद्रह मिनट के हिसाब से कितने डिविजन बनेंगे फर्दर डिविजन होगा यानी एक डिग्री क्रॉस एक डिग्री शीट को अगर फिफ्टीन मिनट क्रॉस फिफ्टीन मिनट पर डिवाइड किया जाएगा तो पंद्रह के हिसाब से यहाँ पर चार शीट और बन रही है सॉरी सोलह शीट और बन रही है और हर एक शीट जो है वो 15 मिनट क्रॉस 15 मिनट के एक्सटेंड की बनाई जा रही है ठीक है यहां पर स्केल जो होगा वो क्या होगा अब एक लाख पच्चीस हजार से ये घट करके एक लाख पचास हजार पे आएगा या बढ़ करके कही है ठीक है तो यहाँ पर 15 मिनट क्रॉस 15 मिनट की जो शीट होगी वो वन टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड के स्केल पे होगी और अब की बार जो यहाँ पर नॉमन यूज होगा वो नंबर का होगा वन टू थ्री अगेन सेम जो सीक्वेंस है वो सेम रहेगा नॉर्थ टू साउथ देन वेस्ट टू ईस्ट सो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन बन गया ये यहाँ पे कोई डाउट है ठीक है अब यहाँ पर जो हम पूछ रहे थे बार बार क्योंकि आपको नंबरिंग का सीक्वेंस पता है कि किस तरीके का होगा अगर आपको कोई भी पर्टिकुलर नंबर दे दिया जाए जैसे कि अभी हमने बोला कि सपोज पहले तो एक इजी लेते हैं 53 बी सिक्स को लग लें अगर हम है ना 53 बी सिक्स को लें तो उसकी इंडेक्स शीट कैसे बनेगी बी फिफ्टी बी वन बी टू बी थ्री बी फोर सॉरी बी थ्री बी फाइव बी सिक्स बी सेवन B9, B10, B11 ये इसकी एडजस्टेंट शीट सारी बनेगी अगर हम 53, B16 को लें तो इसको एडजस्टेंट शीट देखें यहाँ पर क्या होगी 53, B11 होगी फिर 53, B12 होगी अब नीचे देखें नीचे तो खत्म हो गया B के बाद C शुरू हो गया तो यहाँ पर C की कौन सा नंबर आएगा बताइए फिफ्टी थ्री सी नाइन आएगा फिर ऊपर जाएंगे फिफ्टी थ्री बी फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी थ्री बी सिक्सटीन ठीक है फिर नीचे आएंगे तब क्या आएगा ठीक है अब आप राइट साइड देखिए राइट साइड तो एफ और जी आ रहे हैं है ना उसी हिसाब से आगे की नंबरिंग होगी क्या आएगा आप बताइए और सुनील क्लियर है आपको yes, और किसी को कोई डाउट है इसमें थैंक यू मैम चलिए नेक्स्ट नंबरिंग अब हम देखते हैं इसकी तो वन इज टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड का स्केयर हो गया फर्दर वन इज टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड किस पे डिवाइड हो रहा है फाइव मिनट क्रॉस सेवन एंड हाफ मिनट लॉन्गिट्यूड पे ठीक है तो इसमें क्या बनेगा वन इज टू ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड के स्केल की इसको फर्दर डिवाइड करेंगे तो हर एक वन इज टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड की शीट किस में निकलेगी छह शीट उससे और निकलेगी जिसमें फाइव मिनट क्रॉस सेवन एंड हाफ मिनट का इंटरवल होगा ठीक है इस तरीके से ये पूरा डिवीजन होता है इसको नोट डाउन करिए इस स्लाइड में जो लिखा है आई एन एसी टोपोग्राफिक सीरीज टोपोशीट्स का जो सीरीज है ये 
इसमें हर एक स्केल का लैट लॉन्ग एक्सटेंड कितने डिग्री क्रॉस डिग्री कितने डिग्री की टाइल होगी उसकी नंबरिंग कैसे करनी है वो लिखा गया है इसको अपने कॉपी पे नोट डाउन करिए इस स्लाइड को मैम यस मैम जैसे कि हमने लिखा है इंडेक्स सीट तो हम जैसे कि हमें इतनी टोपो सीट से सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन ना मिल पाए मैम तो जो एडिशन सीट हम और जोड़ते हैं जैसे कि हमने जियो रेफरेंसिंग में जोड़ा था डब्ल्यू वन और जी वन करके ऐसे कुछ मैम तो क्या इंडेक्स सीट में उनको मैम लिखेंगे नहीं इंडेक्स सीट तो एक आपका सराउंडिंग शीट का इन्फॉर्मेशन होता है सर... वो तो अगर इंडेक्स शीट अगर आपको अपने स्टडी एरिया के लिए बताना है कि हमने कौन कौन सी शीट्स को यूज करके ये एक्सट्रैक्ट किया है अपना स्टडी एरिया वहां पर आप लिख सकते हैं बट एक जनरल जो एक फॉर्मेट होता है अगर आप किसी भी सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया की टोको शीट को लेंगे तो उसमें इंडेक्स में एडजस्ट मतलब थ्री क्रॉस थ्री का ही वो ग्रिड बनाया जाता है ओके तो यह आप लोगों ने नोट डाउन कर लिया होगा इसको वापस से एक मैप पर हम लोग इस चीज को देख लेते हैं अच्छा अगर आपको बोल दिया जाए 63 जी का ये मैप है है ना 63 जी का मैप है तो आप बताइए इसका लैट लॉन्ग एक्सटेंड कहां से कहां तक होगा कितना होगा कहां से कहां तक होगा तो ये नहीं बता सकते हैं कितना होगा कितने डिग्री क्रॉस कितने डिग्री की ये शीट होगी 63 जी फोर डिग्री क्रॉस फोर डिग्री ये तो अलग अलग आंसर आ रहे हैं और बताइए कोई दो आंसर आए हैं एक फोर डिग्री क्रॉस फोर डिग्री एक वन डिग्री क्रॉस वन डिग्री वन डिग्री का होगा जिस शीट में बना जाएगा वो तो फोर डिग्री में क्रॉस फोर डिग्री का ही होगा ना सिक्सटी जी डिग्री फोर डिग्री क्रॉस फोर डिग्री का कैसे होगा नहीं मतलब एक बॉक्स था मैम यस डिग्री 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 क्रॉस क्रॉस अभी भी कोई वाला है 
है तो बता दीजिए कोई दिक्कत नहीं इसको हम लोग सोल्यूशन देखेंगे कि ये क्यों नहीं है आंसर देन इसका स्केल क्या होगा ढाई लाख में टू लाख फिफ्टी वन इज टू टू लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड है ना ढाई लाख ये कोई स्केल नहीं होता वन इज टू टू लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड या वन इज टू ढाई लाख जो भी है वन इज टू में आप बोलोगे ठीक है ये सारा इंफॉर्मेशन आपने शीट नहीं देखा लेकिन ये नॉमन क्लेचर क्योंकि आपको पता है उससे आप ये चीज अपने आप ही आप कंक्लूड कर पा रहे हो कि ऐसा होगा चलिए यहां से अगर हम देखें अगर इसका टॉप लेफ्ट कॉर्नर 81 डिग्री 26 मिनट का है इसका बॉटम राइट कॉर्नर का कोऑर्डिनेट क्या होगा टॉप लेफ्ट एटी ट्वेंटी सेवन एटी ट्वेंटी सेवन ऐसा होगा एटी वन ट्वेंटी फाइव फोर्टी फाइव मिनट एंड ट्वेंटी सिक्स डिग्री 81 डिग्री 45 मिनट्स मैम 80 डिग्री 45 मिनट एंड y एक्सिस में 26 डिग्री बॉटम राइट का पूछ रहे हैं 81 25 81 25 बॉटम राइट का पूछ रहे हैं ये टॉप लेफ्ट कॉर्नर है बॉटम राइट पूछ रहे हैं 2580 पता नहीं कहा आप लोग क्या पढ़ करके आ रहे हैं कुछ समझ ही नहीं आ रहा है मैम है और किस तरीके से जाते हैं 81 से 80 कैसे चला जाएगा आप बताइए मैम आप खुद सोचिए थोड़ा सा दिमाग लगाइए ये लैटिट्यूड लॉन्गिट्यूड है 81 डिग्री ये लॉन्गिट्यूड अगर आप बॉटम राइट की हम बात कर रहे हैं राइट मींस टुवर्ड्स दी ईस्ट डायरेक्शन तो वो घटेगा कैसे लॉन्गिट्यूड तो बढ़ेगा ईस्ट की ओर आप जब जाएंगे ना ये 60 मिनट्स एंड 26 डिग्री सब गलत सलत आंसर कर रहे हैं मैम 82 25 यस अगर आप वन डिग्री क्रॉस वन डिग्री की शीट है ये पहले ही आप लोग ने बता दिया और ये टॉप लेफ्ट कॉर्नर बता रहे हैं आपको कि ये 81 डिग्री ईस्ट पर है और 26 डिग्री नॉर्थ पर है तो ऑब्वियसली आप अगर ईस्ट की ओर जाएंगे तो लॉन्गिट्यूड जो होता है वो ईस्ट की ओर जाने पर बढ़ता है वन डिग्री के हिसाब से एटी बढ़ करके क्या हो जाएगा एटी हो जाएगा लैटीट्यूड जो है ये अगेन टॉप लेफ्ट है बॉटम राइट right, नीचे की ओर जा रहे हैं तो क्या होगा लैटिट्यूड लैटिट्यूड ऊपर से नीचे जाने पर वो घटेगा इक्वेटर से आप जैसे जैसे ऊपर की ओर मूव करते हैं वैसे वैसे बढ़ता है इक्वेटर जीरो डिग्री पर होता है नॉर्थ पोल साउथ पोल नाइनटी डिग्री पर होते हैं तो अगर आप बॉटम पे जा रहे हैं टॉप से बॉटम राइट right की ओर बार बार बता रहे हैं आपको डायरेक्शन तो ट्वेंटी डिग्री नॉर्थ से वो घटेगा ना बढ़ेगा कैसे सत्ताईस पे कैसे जाएगा सत्ताईस पे तो जब वो ऊपर वाला होगा तब जाएगा जब नीचे की बात हो रही है बॉटम राइट right की बात हो रही है और वन डिग्री का शीट है आपको ऑलरेडी पता है तो वो छब्बीस से घट करके पच्चीस पे जाएगा तो करेक्ट आंसर होगा एटी टू डिग्री ईस्ट एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री नॉर्थ उसको एक बार चेक कर लेते हैं तो आंसर आपको दिख रहा होगा इट्स 82 डिग्री एंड 25 डिग्री समझ में आ गया सबको अगला शीट जल्दी से देखते हैं क्योंकि टाइम ऑलमोस्ट हो गया है इस इंडेक्स शीट को जो आप देख रहे हैं दिस इज 
जी सिक्सटी थ्री जी फिफ्टीन कितने डिग्री क्रॉस कितने डिग्री की ये शीट होगी जल्दी बताइए सबका यही आंसर आ रहा है तो ऑलरेडी आपने जो स्लाइड आपने लिखी है अपने कॉपी पे उसी पे लिखा हुआ है है ना अभी जो इतना सारा नॉर्मन क्लेशर पड़ा जी और जी के बाद फिफ्टीन भी आ गया सिक्सटी थ्री होता तो वन इज टू वन एम होता सिक्सटी थ्री जी होता तो वन इज टू टू लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड होता सिक्सटी थ्री जी फिफ्टीन है तो इसका मतलब वन इज टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड है सिक्सटी थ्री होता फोर डिग्री क्रॉस फोर डिग्री का होता सिक्सटी थ्री जी है देन इट इज वन डिग्री क्रॉस वन डिग्री सिक्सटी थ्री जी फिफ्टीन है इट मीन्स फिफ्टीन मिनट क्रॉस फिफ्टीन मिनट समझ में आ गया ये बात अब इसका जल्दी से 81 डिग्री 45 मिनट 25 डिग्री 30 मिनट इसका जल्दी से बॉटम राइट कॉर्नर का कोऑर्डिनेट बताइए टाइम नहीं है आपका ऑलरेडी की दूसरे क्लास का टाइम स्टार्ट हो गया है इसको जल्दी से बताइए बॉटम राइट कॉर्नर का कोऑर्डिनेट क्या होगा मैम 82 और 25 45 डिग्री 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 मिनट नॉर्थ। करेक्ट आंसर आंसर 82 एंड 25 ओके ये अभी भी यूनिफॉर्म नहीं आ रहा है इसका मतलब अभी भी आप लोग में कुछ कंफ्यूजन है इसी कारण से आंसर्स गलत निकल रहे हैं इसको थोड़ा सा बैठ करके सोचिएगा नॉर्थ साउथ ईस्ट वेस्ट में आप थोड़ा सा मिस्टेक कर रहे हैं उसको ध्यान लगाइए थोड़ा कंसंट्रेट करेंगे तो कोई ये कोई कॉम्प्लिकेटेड चीज नहीं है बहुत ही सिंपल है लिटिल बिट कंफ्यूजिंग है लेकिन ध्यान से करेंगे तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है ओके सो दैट्स इट आज के लिए इतना ही हम लोग अपना नेक्स्ट टर्म क्योंकि कल का ही क्लास आज शिफ्ट हुआ था केवल तो हम लोग का जो नेक्स्ट क्लास है वो फ्राइडे को सेम इलेवन टू वन एम वन पी एम रहेगा थैंक यू सो मच द क्लास इज ओवर फॉर नाउ Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome to all.